Hello everybody and welcome back yet again to another comprehensive drum playthrough review. I really cannot make this any shorter, can I? For everybody who is brand new, hello and welcome. My name is Nick. We like to do these because it is fun. It's great for us to learn from other drummers so that way we can embrace their technique and analyze it so that way we can better ourselves as musicians. And that's the whole point of these videos. So today we're looking at a legendary drummer, one who's been around for a very long time and has drummed with a variety of amazingly famous bands. You guys might even know just by his name alone, Mike Portnoy, that he's played with a lot of bands such as Dream Theater, Avenged Sevenfold, The Winery Dogs, currently with the Liquid Tension Experiment. He's also played with other bands like Twisted Sister as well. So he's definitely done a whole lot of stuff in his drumming career, and he's definitely made a name for himself. But today we wanted to take a look at one of his drumming videos from the Liquid Tension Experiment. This one is called The Passage of Time, and we'll see just how awesome he really is. All right, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let us get right into it. Definitely a lot of symbols. And his timing is insane too. Very interesting editing that he's doing on the video, too. I believe this is an in-studio recording, too. So many different weird time signatures. And he's got up in the corner right there, you'll see, he's got a uh, chart there to let him know just how many bars and what's, you know, the next section coming up as well, for reference. Very good offbeats on there on that China symbol. Yeah, so it looks like he's just using a lot of wrist, and he's keeping it pretty loose. And he's using his hip flexors for his bass drum. He's got another snare that's off to the side there that he's playing on. Right there he's referring to his chart. It is a good idea too if you are in studio just to have a chart with all the uh, layouts and you know how many of what bars of you know coming up in your next verse or whatnot just so that way you don't mess up as often you have that for reference. master in counting. I've seen other videos of him where he talks about how he counts his, uh, his bars and all that. He breaks it up into sections of twos and threes because it's a lot easier to handle the numbers mentally that way. He's doing excellent work here, man. Excellent work. It really is honestly very, very good to see a drummer with his caliber still doing what he does. Because it shows you that even though, you know, it may have been years, you can still keep on doing it as long as you keep consistent. But 
Yeah, his playing honestly influenced me a lot when I was first starting out with drumming. And look at how easily, too, he's switching between his hands using syncopation with his hands. So that way he knows, you know, he doesn't mess up or anything like that with crossing over to hit certain symbols. That takes a lot of work and a lot of practice to get there. Yeah, you can tell by the way he's he's moving. He's using mostly wrists. Supporting solos really well. You'll notice that he strips down his playing a lot, especially during the solo sections. Because he wants those solos to kind of stand out a little bit more. That's something I think a lot of drummers don't really understand when it comes to supporting a solo. You don't have to completely, like, back the solo up with every single note. Sometimes just stripping it down to a very basic beat is all that you need, so that way the solo stands out. Step on that one part there. Classic Fortnite fills right there. Classic. Not really a heavy double bass song either. It's interesting because he's actually kind of close to his bass drums by comparison. gonna bust out all the chops at the end. Excellent job, dude. So yeah, man, that is Mike Portnoy doing what he does best. So there's a couple things to take a look at in this video, especially where his drumming is concerned. So a couple things. You'll notice the video, there was several different cuts where he was wearing different clothes and all that. That is because this, you could tell, was done multiple takes. It may have been during the same day. It may have been all in, you know, one session. He switched out clothes just to keep fresh clothes on it because sometimes having real sweaty clothes on you is just really uncomfortable. Or it may have been a couple days later, he just decided to hop back on the drum kit and retry that some parts of the studio session. All of it's totally normal. A lot of these playthroughs that you see of all these other drummers out there who are doing like all the pro playthroughs where it's just completely black behind them and you just see them and their drum kit. A lot of those playthroughs are multiple takes that they string together the best chunks of each time. So with him doing the editing style like this, it does kind of give it a little bit more of a human perspective realizing, hey, maybe he couldn't nail the whole thing on like one specific take. So he had to do multiple takes instead. And that's perfectly fine to do so. A playthrough is more just to demonstrate what's involved to play the song as far as that particular instrument goes. Sometimes it's used for showing off, but a lot of times it's more used just to show, hey, this is how complicated the drum line can be. Now, something else that I think we should probably bring up as well, how Mike Portnoy counts. Now, I've seen him count in a completely different way than most other drummers will actually count, and I find it to be very interesting. A lot of drummers really don't take into consideration about counting. A lot of it just kind of goes, you know, 
out the window after a little while because you just rely on a metronome. But counting is absolutely vital, especially building that inner metronome. So that way you know how to keep on time and you can actually keep up with your band, especially if you're playing really heavy prog stuff or anything like that. Mike Portnoy, oftentimes he talks about this in other interviews. He breaks up his sections that he needs to count in, in twos and threes. So what does this mean? Well, if he's playing a bar that's in like five, four, he's going to go one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, and count it like that. Or one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Dividing it into smaller units like that is a whole lot easier for your brain to handle and your brain to comprehend because believe it or not, your brain usually can only handle about four or five numbers at a time. After that, you start to get a little bit lost. So breaking up into smaller little subdivisions like that for your counting is oftentimes a lot easier. And it can actually benefit you, especially if you're playing some really crazy prog stuff or anything like that. And if you're getting into really odd timing signatures, you know, like 3116 or like anything really crazy and really out there. So that's just a couple things to take into consideration. Think about maybe subdividing it up a little bit because maybe that'll be a little easier for your brain to kind of grasp and comprehend. It could help you get through a song a little bit easier and maybe make less mistakes. But yeah, again, as we can tell by his technique, he's keeping it nice and loose. He's using a lot of the wrist motion and all that and a lot more of his like full arm motion or anything like that. All that's perfectly fine just as long as you're staying loose with it. He wasn't necessarily going extremely crazy fast or anything like that. So you don't really necessarily need to worry about switching up your technique. But again, just remember if you do need to push it into higher speeds, just take into consideration you may want to switch for your technique up so that way you can better achieve that sound that you're trying to go for. And we're going to cut the video here, guys. Excellent job on Mike Portnoy's part. Drop a comment down below. Tell me what you guys thought of his playthrough. And now here's a couple things you guys can do to support me. So for one, you can leave that comment. You can like, subscribe, share, tell your friends about the video. That would be awesome. You can check out the playlist that I have because I have a lot of videos that are similar to this one. And I'm sure you'll like the other ones I got as well. And also you can check out the links that I got down below because that's linked to my band Spotify and all the music that we got going on. We got some more music that's coming out soon, so be sure sure to check that out because it is going to be brutal and with all that being said guys thanks for tuning in and stopping by and i will see you guys on the next video have a good one y'all